Welcome to the second part of the second installment of, in our discussion of big data and analytical techniques. This video is the second of two on market basket analysis. In this video, we'll focus on a pairwise expansion of shopping baskets in Hive and a simple drag and drop method for building association rules in Oracle Data Mining. Since this is part two of two, we'll quickly review some of the relevant information from part one. Following our review, we'll look at the implementation of a simple Hive UDTF, or user-defined table generating function, for extracting item combinations from a shopping basket. Finally, we'll look at using a combination of Hive, Oracle Loader for Hadoop, and Oracle Data Mining to produce a drag and drop workflow for producing rules from our shopping baskets. In our previous session, we talked a little bit about the history of market basket analysis and some of the algorithms which are used to conduct it. Of all the approaches, the commonality is that we always need to explode or expand the shopping basket and look at the item purchases as K-wise combinations. This could be accomplished via UDTFs or transaction tables, among other methods. From that point, many tools can be used to construct association rules. Data miner, R, Mahout, or simply writing custom code are all equally valid tools for exploring shopping baskets. I'd like to return to the central point of a combinatorial expansion. For any given shopping basket, we would like to create rules for every possible grouping of items. For a basket of meat, potatoes, and beer, we want combinations of meat implies potatoes, meat implies beer. Potatoes implies beer, not to mention meat and potatoes implies beer. In this sense, a simple exploding of an array does not yield what we want. Let's consider the simple case of a pairwise expansion, just the pairs of items in a shopping basket. Hive doesn't provide a function which produces this, so we'll need to write one. Let's say that this function takes in a common delimited string and produces all the pairs within that set of items. Hive provides three different types of user-defined functions. UDFs, which run on the map side and only consider single rows. UDAFs, which account for reduced side execution and require logic around partial aggregation. And finally, UDTFs, which produce multiple rows of output for a single row of input. We'll need to write a UDTF. Hive UDTFs extend from the generic UDTF class and need to override certain input methods. The initialized method must be overridden to validate the input and output types for the function. Hive does this via objects of type object inspector. The process method must be overridden. This is the method which actually operates on a given row. Finally, the closed method should be overridden to perform any cleanup that's necessary. Here, you see the initialize method overwritten. My pairwise function takes in only one argument, the delimited string. So we check the length of the args array. The string OI object is an object inspector on the input, validating that it is a string. The remaining inspectors are for the strings which will make up the output. The process method is extremely simple. If the row is non-null, split the string on comma and loop through the items in the resulting array. For each pair of items, the forward method is called in the pair. The forward method is effectively our return value as it passes the tuple into the table that will be returned for this row. Using a UDTF is simpler than writing one. All we need to do is make Hive aware of the function by first adding the jar to the class path and then assigning a temp temporary function to our UDTF class. Once that is done, we can use the lateral view operator to add pairwise expansion to our queries. Note that because UDTFs produce tables, they need to be lateral views before they can be joined to other projections on the same table. Now that we have our pairwise function, we can begin to compute frequency on our shopping baskets. However, the lateral view forces us to write a more complicated query than we might like. In a subquery, we generate the pairs and their counts, while in a primary, we conduct the, the filtering that we like. 
Of course, we could do this the opposite way, in which we first filtered on the brand name and then constructed our frequency counts. The previous query only gets us a pair frequency. In order to implement the a priori algorithm, we would do, need to do a number of full table scans, keep track of the total number of records, and compute support and confidence for each record. However, we can quickly get our association rules using Hive, Oracle Loader for do, and Oracle Data Miner. We'll start by generating a transaction table, which we can load into Oracle. Each entry in the table will be purchase time, customer, item. The explode function, which, as you may have guessed, is a UDTF, will give us each of the items in the basket as a row in a lateral view. Writing this into a directory in HDFS gives us a transaction table to load. Oracle Loader for Hadoop requires a bit of configuration, specifically a pair of XML files. But it will load our HDFS data into the database in a single MapReduce job. The two XML files which are necessary are a loader map, which maps the columns in our transaction table to Oracle table columns, and a job configuration file, which provides the necessary information for MapReduce to connect to an Oracle database, as well as our input file. At that point, we need only run the Aura Loader class, and our data is loaded. Once the data is loaded, it shows up as a regular partition table in the database. Oracle Data Miner has a built-in market basket analysis widget, which we can use to graphically define our workflow. To do this, we make a new workflow in Oracle Data Miner and connect our table to the association rules block. It's the one with the shopping cart. It's about as simple as market basket analysis can be. The parameters for association rules need to be set via drop-down menu, but our schema makes this simple. We use transaction time as the transaction ID. That is, all the things in a basket happened at the same checkout time. The item ID is, not coincidentally, the item column in our table. At this point, we can run the model and view the results. This lets us view the results as a series of if-then clauses ranked by lift, confidence, or support. The three metrics are defined just the same here as they were in part one of this discussion. From this point, the rules generated are hopefully interesting enough to drive value back to our shoppers.